hey, hey, my name is Emilio. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to upgrade a machine. From the last video, we gave you a bit of an overview around a desktop and a laptop and showed you some of the parts. Well, now you need to upgrade them. You need to change some of the parts inside of it. You wanna add additional resources to make it faster, to give you more hard drive space. We're gonna look at a desktop and a laptop again and also show you what you can be doing to actually improve the performance and upgrade some parts inside of these devices. So here's a spread of some computers. You see we've got a mix of both desktops. These are four different sorts of desktops, different form factors. So some are bigger, some are slightly smaller. And then here we've got four different sorts of laptops. So we've got three Windows based laptops, one small, two larger, standard size, 15 inch laptops. And then we've also got a Mac down the very back, that being a 13 inch uh, MacBook Pro. These are two larger desktops. This is a Dell, this is a HP, and then above it we've got a Lenovo and an Intel. So of course these are more uh, spacious, so you can fit a lot more components inside of these. You'll be able to upgrade these a lot more, while these are a little bit more compact, they're a little bit more custom built. So even though yes, you can upgrade the components in these, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because there's not as much space in them. You're not, you're not also gonna be able to upgrade the most powerful CPU in these because there may not be capacity. The motherboard which is inside, which we'll look at in a second, you may not be able to actually change or upgrade to a newer CPU, while in these ones you can. Now just for your information, these two are a little bit older. Uh, these are uh, older Intel Core um, 2s, while these are a little bit faster. They are, this one's an i5, and this one up the top is an i7 Intel processor. So all four of them, you can upgrade. Generally with a desktop, you can open them up. You can actually get access to the components inside and customize it yourself, but it's not, also the, it's not always the case. The other thing that I will make mention is that these are actually branded computers, right? So you've got HP, you've got Dell, you've got uh, Lenovo, and you've got Intel. So out of the factory, they come pre-built with everything that's inside of it. The other option, of course, is you go down to your local PC store, you pick the case that you want, and then you go and build it exactly how you want. So the case itself isn't a Dell case or isn't a HP case, it could be your own custom case, which of course gives you more flexibility to be able to upgrade it and customize it exactly how you want. So that's what I have done many times. If you want to get the best performance out of your PC, and generally a little bit cheaper sometimes, you may be better to go and actually go and customize it yourself from scratch, pick the case, pick the motherboard, pick the CPU, pick everything, and that's how you build it. So we've opened up a couple of our computers here. This is one of the larger ones. This is the Dell desktop, all right? It's got the CD, DVD drive as well. And then here is the smaller form factor, Intel NUC. So let's just have a look at some of the pieces inside of it so you so, sort of get a bit of an understanding here. But over here, Big piece right here is the power supply. If you remember on the back, this is where you're gonna run the power cable into the back, and that is the main power for the actual computer. So that power is really the entire thing. So you've got cables running out of this, powering this thing down the very bottom, which you can see right here. This is the motherboard. We'll, we'll look at that in a second once we take all this stuff out, but that is powering the motherboard, and then everything else is plugged into the motherboard that then powers everything that is right here. Here's one of the hard drives. So this is a Western Digital hard drive. Okay, so this is of course where all of the data is going to sit, right? So all of the data, the C drive, Windows, everything is installed onto the main hard drive. This hard drive is a larger hard drive, right? So this is a three and a half inch hard drive, while the ones on a laptop, for example, will be two and a half inch. And we're gonna have a look at this in a second, but this smaller one, this thing isn't gonna fit inside here, so this actually has a two and a half inch hard drive, just to let you know. But generally you'll find three and a half inch hard drives are gonna be what's inside of a desktop, and two and a half inch will be generally inside of a laptop or a smaller type of computer, all right? So this particular hard drive uh, has got a, you know, a specific speed that it actually goes at. Um, this one is 250 gig, which isn't too big. Most nowadays you're gonna have a much larger hard drive than this. 
This is what's called a serial ATA or a SATA hard drive. That means that the connections that run into this are actually a SATA connection. Okay, we're gonna look at that in a second. Then you've got, of course, your uh, drive right here. So this is a DVD drive. And as I mentioned, some desktops nowadays may not even have a DVD drive in here. Underneath all of this stuff is you've got a big heatsink with fans, the CPU, you've got RAM, and then you've got some other cards as well. So now it also depends on the desktop itself, but some of this stuff may be hard to get access to. Now it really depends on the vendor, the type, the model of the desktop. Some stuff you may not be able to go and upgrade and replace yourself. In other, in other cases, in this, in this case, you can do this yourself, um, but there'll be, it's sort of compacted, right? So everything needs to fit into this nice space. So to be able to get access to some of this, you need to sort of remove some things. You may have to like hold this, lift up the hard drive like that. You get access to everything else underneath it. So it's all sort of been built so that you can actually pull it apart in pieces. And what I'd recommend is be careful when you're doing this because once you do pull it apart, you need to put everything back together. So take notice of when you are opening certain things, when you are removing certain components, because you then do have to go and reassemble the computer in the same form that it was before. So there's the hard drive removed, and then that in turn runs into this thing called the motherboard. So this is the motherboard right here. There's all these other components as well as some cable ports. You'll see that these are the two. You can just remove that, right? You then go and buy a card and you expand those and you put those into there and then you're gonna be able to access the ports on either end. This is the cable that's running into the back of the SATA hard drive, and that's running into a SATA port on the actual motherboard, all right? Now what you'll also see right here, this is the RAM. So this is the RAM that is actually installed on this motherboard, all right? So this has got four RAM slots, one, two, three, four, with four sticks of RAM inside of it. And of course, if you need to add additional RAM, if you need to expand it, then you would remove or just add additional RAM into here. But of course, I can't access this unless I remove this. So let's just go and remove the actual drive. Okay, so we've removed the drive. So this is the DVD drive. And you see that this one also has cable coming out from the DVD drive straight into the motherboard as well. So you've got the hard drive, which is the blue one, the orange one being the actual DVD drive. And now we've got full access to our RAM. All right, so there are the four slots of RAM. They're going to be done in pairs. You'll see that there are black and white, and they're just more for setting up in pairs. So if you're going to install two slots of RAM, you'd want to install one on the black and then one on the black, or then one on the white, one on the white. In our case, we're filling up all four of them. Now to easily remove these, you can literally just pop these little tabs up on either side, right? You just literally just pop those down, and then the RAM just comes out like that. Okay, and that is the RAM that you now then go and buy and then you insert the additional stick of RAM into there. Now generally, this longer RAM is what you're gonna find in a desktop computer, while in a smaller one, of course, this RAM is too big. It's not gonna fit in a smaller form factor. So there is actually different RAM in here which we'll look at in a second. So this RAM is generally gonna be for a larger computer, but you've also got mix and match, so some Desktop computers are also gonna have smaller RAM, uh, which you can also uh, insert in some cases. But in this case, the longer slots, so you're buying the longer type of RAM right here. And then all you do is you line up the actual bit bottom pieces. One will be shorter than the other one. One will be longer. And then you line them up to there. You should hear it click in, and that RAM has now been installed. And you should then be able to power on your computer and see that additional RAM that's been inserted. Now, in some cases, you may insert RAM and it may not actually find it straight away or it could beep or something. You just need to make sure that the, um, the connections are set up correctly, that it's actually contacting correctly, that the configuration is accurate, and that you've actually got correct RAM as well. So you've got different DDR versions, DDR1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So you wanna make sure that you're inserting the right sort of RAM, the right amount of RAM, because different RAM will only work with specific motherboards, right? So the motherboard will only take a specific type of RAM. So just be aware of that. If you are not sure, then the best thing is to open up a desktop like this, stick a piece of RAM, take it out, go down to your local PC store and say, hey, this is the RAM that I've got, I wanna go and buy some more. The other thing you can do is you can go, in this case, you can go to the Dell website, you look up this particular computer, 
and uh, you go and find what is the maximum amount of RAM and the type of RAM that is allowed on this computer. And that will generally find, uh, will let you know what sort of RAM you need to go and find, okay? That's the RAM. And then the big thing here is, of course, this is a big uh, heat sink and a fan. And underneath this is actually my CPU. CPU being the brains, the central processing unit being the brains for our computer. And sometimes you can also go and replace and change that, but it's all dependent on the motherboard. So you wanna make sure that the motherboard can take a different sort of CPU, perhaps a higher um, a higher spec CPU. So just be aware of that. But you can access this by literally removing the heatsink. You then got a CPU underneath it with a bit of paste on it. So it has proper conduction with, this, with the heatsink, which is what this thing is. And uh, you can then go and buy a new CPU. But I would recommend before you do that, just make sure that other CPUs will actually fit on the actual motherboard and are compatible with that motherboard. Otherwise, it may not actually work. So really depending on the desktop, depending on the year that it was released, the parts in here will generally remain consistent, but the versions will be different. They'll be faster, different sorts of connections. Other PCs will have a lot more of these slots to be able to add additional graphics cards, additional PCI Express cards, etc., for additional functionality. Um, but it's all dependent on the motherboard, which can also be replaced. By the way, of course, you're not have you don't you're not stuck with this motherboard. If your case can handle a different sort of motherboard, you can also remove the motherboard and pull the whole thing apart. But we're not doing that in this video. Just showing you a bit of an overview around this particular desktop right here. So let's look at the little desktop. So this is similar but different. It's a lot smaller. It's a lot more compact, and as a result of that. We can't stick everything that you see in here inside of this smaller form factor. Here, I've got four slots of RAM. Here, well, I've only got two slots. Here, I've got a much bigger CPU with a much bigger processor. Here, I don't, all right? Here, I can stick the bigger hard drive, the DVD drive. I've got all these extra slots in here to, to add additional cards. In here, I don't. So these are the sort of things you've got to consider when you are looking at a smaller form factor computer. They're great, they're small, they're compact, but you can't do as much with them and they're not gonna be as powerful. Now in this case, I've literally just unscrewed the bottom, all right, from there, and that's where my hard drive sits. This is a two and a half inch a hard drive. This is a SATA, this is an SSD. So this hard drive has the single SATA coming out of it, right? And then that runs into this piece right here, being the motherboard, into this port. So by removing that, that's the other connection. There's the, the other end, all right? You just go buy yourself a new hard drive, replace that, and then you can pop that right into there. And then very similar on the back of the hard drive, you've got the other end, you just pop it off, and then you can replace it. So the same on here, you get a new hard drive, you get a new DVD drive, you just pop it off, put the new hard drive in, the new drive in, pop it back on, and then it should find it, it should detect it. Now. This one, as I said, has got two slots of RAM, and this RAM is smaller. This is more laptop-based, or it's, it's actually smaller RAM. You can pop this out by literally doing the tabs on the side, and it comes out, okay? So you see that it's considerably smaller. Here it is, the long one versus the small one. All right, this will not fit on this motherboard. These will not fit on the other one. So very similar to this one right here, you need to go out, find the right desktop RAM for you so that you can go and actually insert it. And then you just line it up. You've got a small end, a longer end. You line it up to the actual slot that's available on the motherboard on this particular computer, and then you pop it into place. So of course, this is custom built. You can't really go and replace the motherboard yourself. It's not meant to be replaced yourself, but you do have access to the hard drive, replacing the hard drive, and you do have access to replacing the RAM, but the motherboard and the CPU that's all sort of underneath it and built into it uh, is a little bit more difficult to actually change um, because of the actual size and because this is more custom built for this particular setup, all right? So that is the larger and a smaller desktop. And generally in people's homes, in businesses, you're gonna find one of two, it could be combinations, it could be some that are more in the middle of these, there could be tower PCs as well. Um, there could even be smaller versions of these. There are smaller ones. There are Intel sticks, which are even smaller than this, that have even more compact components within it. Now, most of the things in here are generally plug and play, and most modern versions, such as Windows 10, for example, uh, will be able to just pick up other versions quite easily, other hardware versions. So when you replace the RAM, when you add an additional hard drive or a new hard drive, when you replace the drive, the disk drives, 
when you add additional cards onto here, even sometimes when you replace the CPU, the actual motherboard, the BIOS, everything that's built into it should be able to pick up these sort of things. When you load into Windows, it should discover and detect these new devices, install the relevant drivers for everything to be able to install itself. Sometimes you will have to go and actually tweak it and get certain things to work, but it's made in a way where you can go and actually change things quite easily. Now the parts that we showed you today are generally the ones that are user replaceable. So the things that you can actually go and replace yourself. All these other components, transistors and all these other ports in here, you generally can't replace it yourself because it's all part of the motherboard. But overall, um, RAM, hard drive, drives, and some other things in here, you can actually go and add and replace yourself. Now, of course, laptops have got batteries. You see that this one has the big battery right here. In some cases, the battery will be removable. In other cases, they will not be removable. The MacBook Pro, it's a not removable battery. So if you are having battery issues, if your battery is not running well, here, you can go and remove it. You can buy a brand new one, you can add it in. You can always have spare batteries. You can get bigger batteries in here. Well, if you're having battery issues, then you have to take it down to your store, to your computer store, your Apple store, uh, and that may be true of other ones, to actually get you a new la uh, laptop battery because you're not gonna be able to change it and replace it yourself. Now, of course, on the bottom of all of these computers, you're generally gonna have a whole bunch of screws that you can open up and get access to certain things, but generally, you wouldn't do that yourself. You'd have to get somebody that is a bit more of an expert, that's an expert around opening up laptops to actually be able to go and get access to certain compa you know, components within it to actually change, upgrade, repair, etc. So here's an example of this Lenovo laptop where I can actually get access to the hard drive. All right, so that is the hard drive itself. So I can slot it in, there's actually a slot. You just unscrew the cover on the side. You can open that up and you've got direct access to your hard drive. So this is a SSD hard drive, and all you would do is you'd unscrew that, you take the hard drive out, you go down to your local PC store, you make sure that the connections are the same. You see that these are the connections, this is a SATA. You can see from the SATA connection, plug it back into there, and then you slide it back in, and then you can actually expand and change the hard drive on your actual laptop itself. But of course, you will see, for example, in this one, this is a lot thinner, so you're not gonna get access to the hard drive in here. There's actually no way to access the hard drive on the left or on the right of this laptop. So you are gonna to have to go down to your computer store and get them to actually go and actually upgrade your hard drive for you because it's not an easily accessible one like on the other laptop. This one, like the other one, you can easily remove the battery. Here, you've actually got a little area where you can unscrew this, open that up, and right under there, you've got access to some RAM. So you can easily open that up and actually replace or upgrade your RAM and make it slightly faster. Take the RAM out, and there it is. So I can now go down to my local PC store, pick up some more RAM, making sure that the specs are the same, and then slot it in myself, and I've actually got some additional RAM inside of this laptop. Now, of course, as I said, you can't do that on every laptop. The Macs, you definitely can't. This one, you can't. So. You can open them up and do a lot of other things if, you, if you're if skilled in that space, but generally you'd leave that to a professional and sometimes opening up other laptops uh, could you know void your warranty. So you just wanna be mindful of that. So in the case of a couple here, you can change the RAM, you can change the hard drive yourself. If you do wanna be able to upgrade it yourself, then just be aware of that because not every laptop will allow you to actually go and replace the parts yourself. So those were some of the tips to be able to upgrade the RAM, some hard drive space, add additional ports, whatever it may be for a desktop, for a laptop. Of course, these are gonna be different depending on the size of the devices and laptops are different to desktops, of course, but hopefully you got some ideas and hopefully you now have a better understanding on how to upgrade a desktop and how to upgrade a laptop. Thank you. Do what you need to do in the social medias by liking, commenting, subscribing, clicking on that bell so that you don't miss out on anything. And do also check out some of my other videos if you do wanna check out all things tech.